You're probably thinking, why should I be listening to you? What, did you go to cooking school or something? Hello everyone, my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome to this video. If you wanna skip the next part, feel free to, but I strongly urge you to stay and learn something about baking. We need to talk about donuts. So I've been seeing all these anabolic donut recipes on YouTube and I just wanted to talk about donuts a little bit and how donuts actually work. To do that, we have an older version of Mina who had his thoughts all put together. Without further ado, on to you, Mina. Thanks, Mina. Before you skip this part, just hear me out. I made this channel not only to show you recipes, but to show you basic cooking skills and techniques that you could then use later on and apply to any recipe that you want. You're probably thinking, why should I be listening to you? What, did you go to cooking school or something? Yes. Yes, I did go to cooking school, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. I talked about this in my brownie video, which I will link up here if you want to go watch that later. Basically, baking is a chemical reaction that takes place between all these ingredients that we mix together. That chemical reaction results in a specific taste, texture, and consistency. Once we change these ingredients, once we change the amount of the ingredient, once we change how we cook the ingredients, those three things are very important. The ingredients, the amount of the ingredients, how we cook the ingredients. So let's talk about the traditional donut. Donut. It's called a donut because it's made out of dough. And when I say dough, I mean a high ratio of dry to wet ingredients. It also has yeast, which helps it rise. It's then rolled out, shaped into a donut shape. And most importantly, they're fried. Donuts are deep fried. A donut is basically a deep fried dough. Let's look at all the donut recipes that I've been seeing on YouTube. It's more of a batter that we then bake in a pan. So it's a baked batter as opposed to a deep fried dough. We have these two completely different things, baked batter, deep fried dough. We can't possibly expect to end up with the same product at the end. Surely it has to be something completely different. My goal was to come as close to the donut as I could. Obviously, we're not able to deep fry it. That would just defeat the whole purpose. Anytime you deep fry anything, you add so many calories in there, it just doesn't make it worth to eat. The next option to look at was to how to make the dough more like a real donut dough. The first thing you'll notice in this recipe that's not in all the other recipes is the yeast. The yeast has three jobs in this scenario. The first job of the yeast is very obvious, which is to help the dough rise. The second job of the yeast, which is the most important in this case, is that yeast makes the gluten structures stronger. What that means is once you bake it, the dough won't collapse on itself. That yeast is going to help keep those gluten bonds in the dough strong. And the third job of the yeast, which isn't that important, is that it gives a bit of a flavor in there. Most people won't even notice that. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the recipe. And if you stayed this long, I commend you for wanting to learn. Back to you, Mina. Let's get back to the recipe. So we're gonna start with the dry ingredients as you usually want to do. So we're gonna put the flour first protein. I talked about this before. You want to use a casein and whey blend. I'm not sponsored by this company by any means. I have tried a lot of brands. This one works the best when you want to bake. Ideally, you would want to use some kind of vanilla or something. I would like to try the cake pop one they have, but it's usually sold out. So that's what I'm going to get next. I'm using the peanut butter cookie. I don't really mind the peanut flavor in the donut. Vita fiber source of sweetener and fiber of course shout out to greg Doucette for this obviously I'm not sure if you guys tried this before as a sweetener but i actually like the taste of this versus splenda or stevia or all the other stuff besides this sweetener we're actually going to use real sugar yes actual real sugar the main purpose of this yeah the flavor is good too but it's there mainly for the yeast it will act as a food with a yeast so it can produce more gases for us. Let's talk about yeast real quick. Right here, I'm using the instant yeast. There are two kinds of yeast. There's the active dry yeast and the instant yeast. The active dry yeast does need to be put in warm water before you use it. So keep that in mind. Instant yeast, you can just add to the dry ingredients. This is an optional ingredient, but it's one of those small things that I talk about all the time that just brings a lot of flavor and a lot of depth into the dish. In this case, it's freshly ground nutmeg. 
that's all you need. We have all the dry ingredients here together. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix them up. The water that you use in here does have to be warm, but not hot. Yeast is a living organism, remember that. You don't wanna kill it with hot water. If you put hot water, you will kill the yeast. So how hot should the water be? How should you know? You should be able to stick your finger in there and leave it for about 20 seconds. If you can't do that, the yeast cannot either and they will die. So keep that in mind. Need to separate our egg. Have another bowl here for the white. Then later on, we're gonna combine all these whites together. This is my favorite way to separate your egg. You might have another way. So as long as you separate it, it doesn't matter how you do it. Yolk's gonna go in here, and then with the water, and we're gonna mix it all up to make the dough. When you put your wet onto dry ingredients, you wanna make a little bit of a well in here, in the middle. Just use your hands, whatever. All right, we're gonna put the yolk, water, mix them all up, and that's what we end up with. It's not so much a dough, not so much a batter either. It's a very thick batter, a very thin dough. So scrape down all the sides. We're just gonna cover this now and it can go into the fridge. Now that it's covered, you can put it in the fridge or you could leave it outside for a shorter amount of time. So you do have to plan a little bit ahead of time to make this recipe. I'm also gonna put the rest of the egg whites here with the egg whites that we separated. That way they'll be ready for us later on. For the chocolate glaze, it was only four ingredients. So I went with the highest quality ingredients that I was able to find. The cocoa powder, I used some kind of a premium Dutch cocoa powder. It's a higher quality than the usual Walmart stuff. Vanilla extract, this is real vanilla extract, not the imitation stuff. The chocolate chips, these are the ones that I always use, the Nestle brand. In my opinion, they just have the best taste overall. You can always add sweetener or sugar to this. I chose not to. I was okay with the taste of the chocolate chips and the cocoa powder in there, but absolutely feel free to add any kind of sugar or sweetener that you like in here. So we're just gonna weigh the chocolate chips here and we're going to microwave them until they melt. And this is the only time that you'll ever catch me using a microwave. Also, don't forget to ruin your calories for the day and eat a handful of chocolates. So after a minute and a half in the microwave, take them out, stir the chocolate chips, add the rest of the ingredients and the frosting is done. All right, so this is what the mixture looks like after about an hour and a half. You can see all the bubbles in there and it actually got larger than before. And it's more of a dough now. It's kind of a loose dough, but there's a structure in there now. You can see there's gas. There's gas that's being trapped in the dough because we used yeast. So we're going to preheat the oven with the pan in there. The reason we're going to do that is because we want that texture on the bottom. You'll see what I'm talking about later. Give it a spray. Now we're just gonna whip the egg whites with the beater and add some vanilla extract in there. That's it. Probably gonna mute this part because it's gonna be loud. So enjoy the music. So this is what it should look like afterwards. And the reason we're doing this is this is going to introduce a fluffiness to the dough. So to put this into here, we're gonna use a technique known as folding. Folding is mainly a baking technique where you fold one thing into the other. So we don't want to mix this in here because otherwise we're going to deflate all the bubbles that we have here. So we wanna gently fold this on top of it and i will show you how to do that right now you want to begin with a small amount of it this is going to be like the sacrificial amount that you sacrifice in the beginning to get the whole thing going so this is what i do you fold it over like this and then you spin the bowl as you do it you're gonna take a second batch of it do the same thing again with it and you can go in with the rest of it now. Remember, you don't want to mix this. We're always doing this motion where you grab it here, pick it up, drop it, and twist the bowl. Once you practice a little bit more, you can do it quickly, but just like anything else, you wanna focus more on the form rather than speed with this. So just focus on 
folding everything right. Always scrape the sides of the bowl too. And don't work the dough too much so you don't deflate the egg whites. And that is the end product. To get this batter into the pan, you have a couple different options. You can either use a pastry bag or you can just use a spoon. A spoon is kind of hard. You can probably pull it off, but I would recommend using a pastry bag. Most people don't have a pastry bag. Neither do I, to be honest with you, mainly because I don't really need them. I don't use them that often and I don't decorate any cakes. I just use a Ziploc bag and I put the batter in here, cut off the tip of this and just use this as a pastry bag. It's good enough. Pro tip, have one of these little scrapers. It really helps you to scrape the batter into the corner of the bag later on. Here's another tip. There's a lot of tips in this video. When you fill a bag, fold over the edges so you don't get that dirty. It's gonna keep the bag clean. Also, put it inside of a bowl so it's a lot easier for you to fill it up. This is especially helpful if you're working by yourself, which I usually am. Now the edges are all clean. Oven's ready. Perfect timing. So you can see here how that scraper is really helpful to get all the dough in one side of the back. So this is why we preheated the pan to get a nice brown crust on the bottom. It in a way mimics the deep frying method, so we're getting as close to the real product as we can. Then all we have to do is dip it in the glaze and add the sprinkles. hours of work the donuts are finally ready and to be fair we have a donut from a local franchise that we will compare it to all right the most important part is the inside of it see it still has that cakey consistency and it didn't collapse on itself because we used the yeast Let's see what this one looks like. There's is obviously more of a spongy texture and that is because it's deep fried like we talked about earlier. And here's a side by side. That frosting is really good. Let's try the airs. That's really sweet. So much sugar in here. And overall, I think we got the 75% roll down. That's a winner. And just like in the chicken one, I will have the macros of these two on the screen. So you could really see which one you would rather eat out of these two. And if you like this video, if you learned anything from this video, hit the like button. More videos will be coming really soon. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. Go check out the discussion section. If you make any of my recipes, tag me on Instagram. I will make sure to repost everyone and I will see you in the next video. Peace.